Hi everyone, welcome to yet another video. This one isn't to do with solar power as much, it's to do with a, a discovery. Um, what I was doing is I was looking through my computer parts in my office and I was just looking at what may be useful for part of this solar power system. And what I found was this UPS. The UPS interested me because the way the UPS works is basically a battery backup system. You plug your PC equipment into it, and you plug the mains into it. Um, this thing runs off the mains, it charges batteries, and then if the mains turns off, then your computer runs off the batteries, which are inside the unit. So I thought, well, so that must have two things in it. It must have a battery charger, and it must have an inverter in it. And it does. So that's useful, because the inverter part of it uh, is useful to the solar project. So I've been looking at it and researching this thing and finding out how it works. This by the way is a 1000 watt inverter. What's special about it as well is that it's a pure sine wave inverter so it's really good it could be very useful to the solar project. So from what I gather this is how it works. This is from my research and maybe Maybe a few people can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this and maybe give me more info. This is my understanding of how the thing works. The power input comes there, comes in there, 240 volts AC. Goes through this wire here to this two pin thing, connector, mate and lock, whatever it's called. That then goes into this here. Then something happens here which I don't fully understand. Um, Something happens down here which I don't fully understand. Then it gets plugged into this four, four pin thing. The four pin thing goes here, which it goes to the transformer. Now, from what I understand, it gets 240 volts AC, which is still at this point, and it transforms it to um, about 13 volts AC. So, 13 volts AC comes out of there, and it gets plugged into this, or it gets screwed into that actually. I believe this is called the H-bridge, which transforms AC to DC and DC to AC. So at this point it, it transforms, uh, sorry, transforms the 13 volt AC into DC, using these MOSFETs here. I'm not exactly sure how this works by the way, but... So what I believe happens. So after this, now we have 13 volts DC. Then again, <coughs> something happens here which I'm not sure about. And that gets doubled up. It, gets, it somehow gets stepped up to about 26 volts. And there's a capacitor here which I believe um, cleans the, the wave or something like that. It, it makes it more stable. Or so I believe. Then from there, um, it goes it goes up here to the battery to charge the battery, and then back from the battery to close to finish the circuit, which is based on a little. Uh, it's basically a little fuse-like device, which you can pull out to break the circuit. So that's the way the input seems to work. Now. That's the bit which doesn't really make much difference to me because I won't be using the, the charger bit. I want the other. I want the other bit. So this is the bit that's important to me, and this is how I believe it works. It's pretty much in reverse. So the power comes from the battery. I'll skip that bit there because you know about that that little breaker thing. It comes from the battery. Um, I guess the first thing it does is half the voltage over here somewhere. So it halves the voltage to about 13 volts DC. Um, the H bridge then changes it to 13 volts AC. From the 13 volts AC, it steps it up to. At some point here, we must step it up to 26 volts or something like that. 
then it steps up to 240 volts AC then it goes through here then something else happens some other circuitry here and it gets output to the 3 pin one there's 3 pins on there but there's actually 2 on this then from there there's a couple of earth connections and some sort of smoothing capacitors and then it goes to the output and that's a bit interest me so so what I need to do on this to try and increase the wattage apparently what I have to do is upgrade these MOSFETs currently there's 8 MOSFETs in it and I think I need 16 and that might be able to double the wattage from 1000 to 2000 watts Um, and also I've noticed that there's one capacitor here it looks like the space for two so I'll try and upgrade that too so if anyone can give me any more information on exactly how this works because obviously I have quite a limited understanding of this thing at the moment if anyone can give me any more ideas on how this thing actually works that'd be that'd be really good specifically why why would I need to upgrade the MOSFETs and what? how exactly does this work? Um, but there we go. So I'm probably going to upgrade the MOSFETs and upgrade the capacitors as well. I'll certainly put another capacitor in. Another thing I'm going to do as well is apparently heat is a problem here. So I've got a few bits that I'm going to put onto this. This thing here I might actually put all of this onto a wooden board and put some sort of perspex over it or something like that. But what I'm going to do here is put a heat sink on it. Like a CPU heat sink or something like that. So a tower up here and I'll put a fan on the top of that. So that should cool that right down. Maybe a 12 centimetre fan or something. Cool that right down. And similarly, I might put I don't know, it looks like a looks like I put a 60mm fan on there, an aluminium fan. Strap it onto this somehow. Oh no, I can't use an aluminium fan actually because um these are current carrying heat sinks. Um notice here that one says black on it. And it's screwed into there. And this one says white. And obviously that's screwed into there, so I can't do that actually. Um, what I could do is put four, four, I could put four long fins, like fin heat sinks along the top and then put a plastic fan on top of all of those. That would work. Anyway, so I need to cool this down. That should work. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, and if anyone's got any advice, any ideas, or anything like that, just let me know. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.